on her way up. Uh, just the, the few minutes drive and we will be able to tell you, show you the bride and tell you a little bit more about what she's wearing and whether uh, the designer was indeed Stuart Parvin, uh, who runs the bridal salon in London, but who trained at the Edinburgh College of Art. So that, that's always been the main name in the frame and we'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. So the car is on its way from Holyrood House, the Queen's residence here in Edinburgh, of course, uh, to Canongate Kirk here. You can see the crowd, members of the crowd thinking, do I put down my Union Jack so I can put up my camera, you know, and kind of juggling as they wait for the bride to arrive. They've already had the parade of royals, that great glimpse uh, view of uh, the new Duchess of Cambridge, the young princesses Beatrice and Eugenie, and for those who are on dress and fashion watch, they're getting very excited. And here she is, and here is the bride arriving at Canongate Kirk, the Queen's granddaughter, 13th in line to the throne. And we can tell you about the dress is designed by Stuart Carvin, what you're looking at. She's wearing an ivory silk dress. Oh, now you see it coming through with her veil. Her ivory gown by Edinburgh trained designer Stuart Carvin. Silk Duchess sat in there for the bust of the dress, a very full skirt. And the uh, fabric covered buttons again at the back of the gown and the veil, cathedral length veil. Uh, Buffon style coming out behind that ivory gown. Stuart Parvin, who runs his own bridal salon in London, is an Edinburgh educated designer. There we go. Turning to face the camera is the very briefest of waves. Now, the wedding gown was chosen, we, we understand, from the, the white room in Minchinhampton, and the shoes, Jimmy Choo shoes. Uh, the tiara is interesting. You just had a glimpse there of the tiara, um, which was, is the Greek key tiara. Now, this was lent to the bride by her mother, the Princess Royal, Princess Anne. Uh, and we didn't really see very much there, did we? We'll get more later, but uh, the, the tiara has this key effect sculpted into it, and the royal dress we can confirm from Stuart Parvin. So I think the crowd would have wanted to see a little bit more there and have a little bit more of a wave, but uh, they'll be hoping for a, perhaps more of a formal pose as the bride and groom come out, and so people settling in here uh, waiting veil it's called and the tiara that you would just have been able to see perhaps uh, somewhat obscured by the veil but that tiara uh, has history and has resonance because it was uh, lent by the bride's mother the princess royal princess Anne and that is called the Greek tiara tiara the Greek key tiara if we were afforded a close-up glimpse of it we would see a key design uh, etched into it so that's the something borrowed and uh, as she arrived, people were speculating here, will it be something somewhat unconventional? Will it look particularly modern? I think the answer was no, this is a romantic, traditional ivory wedding gown. Zara Phillips is known for uh, being a little bit daring, uh, being unconventional, being very modern, being her own woman. But today, this was a very traditional dress. And, uh, Philippa, the ceremony continues. Uh, we are hoping to see the happily married uh, couple uh, and uh, their families and, and guests uh, pose for some photographs as, as they leave the church. What else can we expect from today? I think we won't see a great deal because this isn't this isn't an occasion for the public or for the media. We'll uh, see the uh, the bride and groom exit. We'll all be watching out for the uh, the royal wedding party as well. Uh, but they will go behind us back down to Holyrood House, which is not very far down Edinburgh's Golden Mile. Uh, mile here, um, back down to the uh, residence of the Queen. Uh, there'll be a, the wedding party there, uh, and we we don't expect to have very much public access as it were, to the newlywed couple. Uh, we don't expect to see the doors are opening, so we'll find out how much access we have in the next few minutes. And uh, people kind of scrambling back. You can see there the bride and groom coming down the aisle. 
of uh, Canongate Kirk. I'm going to just let you have a little more view here because you can see the camera flashes, you can just see that uh, veil. The photographer, we hope, moving from the shot as the bride and groom, Mike Tyndall and Zara Phillips, who remains Zara Phillips, emerge. Now you get more of a view of that dress. See the ivory dress and um, duchess satin, I'm told, and silk. Uh, she's wearing Jimmy Choo shoes, not that we can see them. The kiss. So the second of the Queen's grandchildren is to be married. You can tell that I'm standing next to a lot of the uh, photographers who are I think understandably frustrated at their view being blocked here. Oh, really, really. There we go. They'll be happier now. And we have a moment. Can we have a kiss there? Photographers calling for a kiss. You can see the Princess Royal on the steps. The bride's mother. Queen's official bagpiper setting up again, a broad grin on the face of Mike Tyndall, England's rugby captain. And you can see that tiara glittering now, the tiara which was uh, lent to the bride by the Princess Anne, the Princess Royal. Proud parents behind. And you can see the Queen is just within the door of Canongate Kirk, um, giving the bride and groom their moment. They're being cheered as they are taken back to Holyrood House. A final little wave from Zara Phillips. The Princess Royal here, waiting for her car, may remember that hers was the last royal wedding in Scotland when she married her second husband, current husband, uh, Tim Lawrence, Vice Admiral Sir Tim Lawrence, uh, almost 20 years ago. Maybe a little overwhelming for Mike Tyndall's family, his, uh, his mum and dad, uh, Phil and Linda Tyndall. Though Linda Tyndall gave an interview a little while ago in which she said she loved her daughter in Lawrence, thought she was a nice, ordinary girl. And uh, certainly she's having a very special day. So here we have the parents. Yeah, big cheers from everybody. And the, the Queen and day. Prince Philip emerging oh, from oh, Canongate oh, Kirk. Very big cheer as the Queen the comes into view in her the Queen, the Bennett, the, the pale peach the outfit. Out Charles and Camilla just emerging. Now we see uh, Kate's hat before we see Kate, but there are the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge behind the, the Prince of Wales and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall. Up to the Palace of Hollywood House for the evening's festivities. William and Kate perhaps holding back just a little bit, not wanting to be the focus of attention immediately. But as the Queen waves to the crowd, William and Kate, of course, one of the biggest cheers. We have, as Prince Philip waves the crowd goodbye, you have a Prince Charles and Camilla with Harry behind them. A, a little glimpse there of uh, the princesses Beatrice and Eugenie. And that incredible oval of a hat, uh, almost a modern sculpture, adorning Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge. Quite a statement in itself. Very simple, very modern, very striking. For the departure now of the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. The Princess of Royal saying her Princess Royal saying her thanks, preparing to leave. And into the spotlight, Prince Harry, Prince William, and Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, saying her thank yous and goodbyes. They're intensely aware that we're aware of them at one of the rare public sightings of the other newlyweds the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge.
little wave there from William. A helping hand for the hat into the car as Princess William and Harry and the Duchess of Cambridge move out of public view. A lot of cameras being wielded in the crowd. The princesses Eugenie and Beatrice. And of course they have to be here with the original headgear and they've lived up to that. A nice wave and a smile. Edward and Sophie, the Earl and Countess of Wessex, now waiting for their car. And uh, I'm absolutely no fashion expert, but there are some extraordinary hats, and this is one of them supported by Sophie, the Countess of Wessex. A very happy crowd, much more of a view, more waves, more smiles than uh, we saw on the way in, which is to be expected. Now, the immediate members of the royal family uh, have their official cars, and then we move into minibuses, and uh, then we'll be into executive coaches. As the 300 or so guests are decanted from the historic Canongate Kirk after quite a brief wedding ceremony, and they make their way just down the Royal Mile here in Edinburgh Jackie Stewart. Jackie Stewart to Holyrood House. We're going to give you another chance now to have a look at those uh, first pictures we saw as the bride and groom, the newly married Zara Phillips and Mike Tyndall emerged from Cannon Gate. Here's, here are the pictures and we now get a bit more of a view of uh, the gown designed by Stuart Parvin. The dress there, perhaps more traditional than we might have expected from uh, Zara Phillips, but, it, but both of them are very um, traditional, elegant look. Mike Tyndall, not in a kilt, in his uh, tra traditional morning dress. And there you see, you see gown, veil, tiara, and we had that kiss for the cameras as well. So it made the photographers uh, crowded around our media position here outside the church a lot happier. <laughs> we had some waves to the crowd. Such a contrast, isn't it, to uh, those rehearsal pictures we saw yesterday with the bride and groom in their um, denims and well dressed down, very, uh, very natural, but they still look very relaxed, knowing that uh, we're all out here, that they're the focus of media attention. They look very uh, relaxed and natural as they get into the car. And their celebrations uh, this, this evening, this afternoon, this evening, are again private, family and royal, and taking place at Holyrood House, uh, which is uh, partly usually open to the public and has been um, closed off for a few days until Monday, I believe. Uh, and we hear that the, uh, the Queen has uh, donated £40,000 to cover for any lost ticket receipts. Uh, although the other big cost of this wedding, which uh, some may frown upon, is uh, the cost of all the security surrounding the royal party. We're told that... Uh, They bring the bus in, the crowd groans because, of course, they want to keep looking at the congregation, seeing who they can spot. A lot of spot, star spotting going on. So, there's a little bit of a conflict here between a uh, celebrity watching and the needs of the transport. 